Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, gonna show you a little bit of uh, vowel pocketing amongst other things today. Right guys, so these are a standard set of Marla Cosworth pistons, standard size. Um, these are for Dave Pritchard at DP Motorsport. Don't forget the DP Motorsport. He had a moan at me last time for mentioning his name and not the company. Um, so if you guys, by the way, want to check out Dave, go on his Instagram page at DP Motorsport and you'll see some of the, the builds that Dave does there. Um, great Cosworth engine builder. Anyway, these are his pistons. Now, this is these, this set here is for one of the blocks that I've put the top hat liners in and done the the ten long studs. Because we face the top of the block, we've had to machine the top of these pistons. Now, we've basically calculated that if we take 15 thou off the top of these pistons, we're going to get the perfect jut out um, or the perfect squish for these um, so that's what we've done we've removed the, the 15 thou off the face here um, just the arrow just points towards the front um, although you would be able to tell because you've got the cut out there for um, which would be obviously for an oil squirter which isn't in this block but that would be the side of the oil gallery um, so the next step on these is to put the valve pockets in bit like this piston here although this is an identical piston um, this is my sort of dummy piston that I use as a mock-up on my setup on the Miller machine here um, just to sort of see where we are and where we've got to go to so we're back on the trusty mill this is the Miller machine that I do most of my sort of odd machining you know the, the, the manifolds and all that business um, so I'll just talk you a little bit through the setup so this is basically a an adjustable sort of angle plate um, it's basically a vice an adjustable vice there with a, a reading of angles on with a a plate in the jaws there that we've modified um, so we've done we've machined this pin which is the same size as a nice slide fit there same size as a Gudgeon pin and then we um, we basically clamp it down with these two bolts here flat on the bed um, so what we do is we we set up say the inlet side first um, so we'll set that on there we get our cutter which is the right the right size cutter for doing this um, this cutter is slightly bigger a couple of mil bigger than an inlet valve and that's the way I like to do it um, and I've actually done a pocket here as you can see I've put one in already from what I do is go from the highest point and I go five mil down and that's how deep I do my pockets so that's more than enough and it works out that the outside diameter here is probably about a millimetre away from the edge of a standard inlet valve and as you can see it comes right to the edge and, um, and that would be perfect so I'm going to move this over I've ca I calculate it that if we move this over once we've done the first one on zero there if we move it over 40 millimetres that will be in the exact position that we want for the next cutout so we'll just wind this over 40 millimetres from the last cutout now I'm no doubt that some of you guys are going to comment down below um, stating that I've got a bit of a Heath Robinson setup here but I bet a few of you are wincing now a little bit don't worry, perfectly safe. Good 
There we go. Five mil deep. do is do all the inlets first and then we'll turn around and set the exhaust up and do all the exhausts. And there we go. See those nice shiny valve pockets? Just the job. I'm a bit paranoid. zero to do the other side and there we go and there we go So that's the inlets done on these. So they're nice big pockets. So we'll turn them around now, do the exhaust, and then I'll give these a nice fettle and uh, get rid of the burrs and then uh, they're all done. So this is the second block of Dave's. As you can see, I've bored the first two for the liners, just on the third one now, and hoping to get this one, well, definitely get this one done with the liners in uh, by the end of the day. Um, so these are the liners that are going in and remember I said to you the other day about um, when I fit these liners I always put a little chamfer on that edge there so if we get up to the light you can see that there's a very slight chamfer there and so there's no chance of that taking a shaving off the side of the block and giving you and putting swarf underneath and giving you a false indication of, um, of a bottom out so that's what i do there um we've got the other block here which i got the liners in this morning so that one's sitting there ready to be bored as soon as i've got this this one done i shall get that one bored um and dave is going to come in and collect all his stuff on wednesday um so a bit of a rush on so there we go, all complete, machine the tops, done all the bow pockets, and they're ready to be boxed up for our friend Dave. Okay, so one of the brothers Cosworths here, the one with the drop liners, we did a video about the other day, uh, just been on, to the, on the phone to the customer, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try, I'm gonna strip this and I'm gonna to attempt to press these liners out from the bottom. Um, the only thing that concerns me at this point is I said, obviously these have dropped. They could have now seated correctly, but then again, they couldn't have. So it's a complete gamble. Um, so the, I think the option of just facing this flush again and starting again is, we're not gonna bother with that. Um, it's too risky. Um, but what he did point out to me, which I didn't notice before, I don't know whether any of you guys did, but this liner here, or the flange of this liner at the top, is definitely wider than all the other three. Um, and he said that he supplied these liners to the machining company and they were all identical. So what has happened with this liner, I do not know. Whether they've had a bit of a whoopsie um, and had to go slightly bigger and put a custom liner in there, I don't know. But if that's the case, 
you know, we don't know whether it's at this point, we don't know whether it's ductile iron. Um, chances are, if they've had a bit of a whoopsie and they've had to put another liner in there themselves or, you know, buy it themselves, they're not going to, they're going to replace it with just a cast iron one. I don't know. But, um, it's, you know, I think the option now, the only option is to, is to get these out. So I'm going to get it stripped, turn it over, try pressing them out. If no joy, then I'm going to have to machine them out and hope that the the diameter of the liners down the bottom there are smaller than the ones we use. Otherwise, we're going to have to go for a custom liner or another block. So um, I think in the next few days, um, we're going to get these stripped out and um, see if we can go ahead and push these liners out. Okay, guys, well, thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you haven't already, remember to smash the subscribe button. Um, comment down below, if you will, on anything that you've seen. And um, we'll see you in another video. Cheers, guys.